All right, thanks so much for staying here on the AM Show. My name is Benedict Tosi. Time to talk sports now. And the Ghana Football Association has banned Asante Kotoko temporarily from using the Babaya Sports Stadium for their home matches in the ongoing Ghana Premier League following last Sunday's misconduct by some fans of the club. There is more in the following report. Following incidents at the Baba Yara Stadium during a Santi Kotoko's Premier League match with Brekum Chelsea on Sunday, the GFA Executive Council has decided to temporarily ban a Santi Kotoko from playing its matches at the Baba Yara Sports Stadium pending the adjudication of the matter by the GFA Disciplinary Committee. The GFA Executive Council at this meeting on Monday, January 13, 2020, decided to trigger the provision of Article 14, Subsection 2 of the GFA Premier League Regulations. Article 14, Subsection 2 of the GFA Premier League Regulations states that the GFA may order the closure of any league centre or venue where the safety of clubs, match officials and or spectators cannot be guaranteed. The GFA prosecutor shall prefer charges against any person or party found to have breached any provision of the GFA regulations or disciplinary code. All right, so let's get more perspective to this and go over to the phone lines and speak to communications director of Asante Kotoko, Kennedy Boachi and Saken. Thanks so much for joining me this morning here on the show. Uh, uh, first of what, what do you make of the decision from the Football Association? Um, I think it was expected uh, based on what transpired at the, at the stadium uh, mm. before and after the uh, during and after the game. Um, most of us knew that such an issue or uh, such a decision be taken by the by the GFA. So it doesn't uh, come to you as a surprise. Not at all. Not at all. Uh, but actually, accepted the decision by the FA. Mm. And you've accepted the decision? Of course, uh, because uh, you know uh, there should be safe haven for for. For soccer fans, players, and officials to enjoy football, and you know and that is why the statement we issued yesterday we actually contained all the issues that happened on the mm. Sunday. And what does this do to the club? I mean, you are playing a season where you want to win after winning two matches on the right track, and then uh, this comes in. What, what does uh, what does this mean to the club? It's difficult, um, but we try to ourselves up, uh, brace ourselves for the for the issues at hand now. Um, but I think that we also need to, as a club, as a matter of agency, need to educate our supporters to accept the three accounts of football, which is you win, you lose, or you go. And when it's not a going get stuff for you, uh, you're not supposed to take the law into your hands. So uh, we need to educate our fans uh, to accept all these issues. So the basic thing now to do is to engage the fans, of course, uh, okay. whichever venue you'll be taking to. But where, where would you guys uh, be looking at? Uh, that decision will be taken by the GFA. Uh, that will not be there. Uh, the GFA will take the decision to uh, as to where we will play our next home game. Mm. And wherever the FA takes you to, you are ready to go and play? Uh, most definitely. Uh, because uh, uh, there are rules and reasons uh, guiding the game in Ghana. Mm. And uh, <coughs> you just want to take it clearly in the regulation. Uh, those decisions will be taken by the FA. And again, um, uh, the, the venue shouldn't be a punishment to that waiting. Okay. So, um, uh, it's good with that. It's difficult to go back to the for, for whatever it is now the FA will take. And is this likely to have any effect at all on our campaign? Because, yes, as I mentioned, yeah, he started a very good campaign, and now, after just a, a defeat, things are just going to go back. And is that likely to have any effect on the campaign? Um, you know, it's Kumasi is a traditional home. Uh, it is much easier for us to uh, rake in a lot more revenue that we are paying in Kumasi. Again, um, oh. that, is the, that is the base of the club, so it will be difficult for us to go back. Fortunately, the uh, Dakota supporters almost everywhere in the country. Mm. Uh, we believe that, and as much as it's difficult for, for us to accept the fact that uh, we can't play our next home game in Kumasi, it is an opportunity for us to also, uh, probably uh, uh, let fans in other places to also have a feel of the club. Mm. Well, you are close to the team. Uh, you interact with the players as well as the officials on a daily basis. Uh, what have they been telling you about uh, this? Um, fortunately, the shooting incident happened um, uh, after the, the, the club has had left the stadium. Okay. So 
Both of them, the president is the whole, the whole issue. But I'm sure uh, they've been hearing about the incident on radio and all that. Uh, it's good for everybody. But fortunately, that was a very experienced coach and coach, Mark uh, Okunidu. The medical team is still working on the psyche of the boy. Uh, we believe that we'll be ready for the game against in Germany tomorrow. All right. Ken, thanks so much for your time uh, this uh, morning uh, here on the show. So that was Kennedy Boachin Ansan, who is spokesperson or communications director of Kumasi Asan, of course, speaking to us uh, on the decision of the FA to ban them temporarily from using the Baba Air Sports Stadium after what happened over the weekend at that very venue. Well, away from the local scene, we have to do some international stories. And after two and a half years at the club, Barcelona have sacked coach Ernesto Valverde and replaced him with former Robert T's coach, Cricket Setien. Now, there's more in this report by my colleague, Asai Bidiaco. The 55-year-old Valverde helped the club win two successive La Liga titles and they lead on goal difference this season. However, the Catalan side have produced a series of unconvincing displays under his leadership and have failed to reach the Champions League final. The 61-year-old Kike Setien led Betis to their highest finish since 2005 and to the Copa del Rey semi-finals before leaving in May. He has agreed a two-and-a-half-year deal and will be presented to the media later today. In a statement, Barcelona said they had reached an agreement with Valverde to terminate his contract and thanked him for his professionalism, his commitment, his dedication and his always positive treatment towards all that make up the Barca family. Valverde was under pressure towards the end of last season following the shameful Champions League semi-final defeat by Liverpool having led 3-0 after the first leg and the Copa del Rey final loss to Valencia. Kike Setien arrives at the Camp Nou as a highly regarded coach. After managing lower league size, he led Las Palmas to 11th in La Liga, their best finish for 40 years and enjoyed further success at Betis, where in his first season he led them to 6th place and qualification for Europa League. Betis also secured wins over Barca, Real Madrid and Atletico Madrid during his two-year tenure. He, he left the severe outfit by mutual consent in the summer. So Ernesto Valverde is gone quickly. Uh, Setien is a new manager of Barcelona. But of course, as Asari mentioned, the only thing possibly you know about him is that he's a former Robertis manager. But the other things that you didn't know about him, so check this out. <laughs> 